you are very familiar with the subjects already, uh, because that's really the basic of basics in Christianity. Um, so all the more we need to talk about it and also practice it uh, every day. So that's why uh, I feel that we need to talk about it and even in a deeper way today. So. Um, we want to think about the forgiveness and learn about forgiveness in a more complete way. Uh, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace in the past week. And uh, you have uh, protected us, you have provided us, and your grace has been with us along the way. And today, we just uh, open our hearts and our mind to you. And we welcome the Holy Spirit to lead us into all the truth uh, that Jesus has taught. So especially in the area of forgiveness, Father, we pray we're not only hearers of the truth, but also we are doers of the truth. And we know that it is not by our uh, determination, decision, but it's by the Holy Spirit inside of us that will empower us to do the right thing that is to forgive. So Father, we just uh, pray that you lead, lead us in your truth and uh, empower us to do your truth. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, so I want to ask you, how many of you pray the prayer of Lord's Prayer every day? None? Okay. Okay, what about, uh, how many of you can remember, uh, can recite the Lord's Prayer? Alright, okay, that would be half of you. <laughs> and I strongly recommend you to uh, memorize, uh, make sure you know the Lord's Prayer by heart. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I think I shared with you with a, about the story that I read from Reader's Digest. And this guy was lost in a cave, okay? He was, you know, uh, rolling the boat in the cave. Uh, he was uh, pretty uh, much into uh, adventures. And then he was lost, and there's, you know, he was so dangerous, there's no way for him to come out. And then, uh, uh, he wasn't a, really a believer, but uh, growing up uh, as a Catholic, he, re he can recite uh, the Lord's Prayer. So he decided to recite the Lord's Prayer, and after a thousand times, he was finally able to bring it out. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, I think, uh, I don't think you'll get lost in a cave, but uh, we get lost uh, one way or the other, okay? So we definitely need to know uh, the, uh, the Lord's Prayer by heart because uh, this is how Jesus taught us to pray. And uh, there's a reason why he has uh, you know, given us such an example to pray. And as uh, if you notice, uh, there are actually uh, six parts or six themes uh, to the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is very simple. Just like uh, Jesus always wants to make things simple. Uh, so uh, God wants to make things uh, simple so that we can really get it and do it. So um, uh, that's the wisdom of the Lord. So in the Lord's Prayer, it's very simple. Only six things. The first th uh, three things were about God, about the kingdom of God. Uh, and then the, uh, the latter three things about our needs, okay? And uh, uh, among one of them is uh, forgiveness. So let's read from uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 together. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. One more time. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. So we know here, even in the Lord's Prayer, which is very brief and short, the word forgiveness uh, appears at least twice. Okay? And it's also uh, one-sixth of the Lord's Prayer. So we see the importance of forgiveness in a man's life. Uh, in the, uh, here we see that Jesus emphasized the, forgive, the importance of forgiveness in human relationship as well as our relationship to God. You know why it's so important? Because every day we sin, we make mistakes. So we need forgiveness every day from God. 
And likewise, every day, we can sin against other people or other people who sin against us. So we need to forgive people every day. Everybody say, every day. Every day. So forgiveness is not something that just stays in the Bible. It's not something that just stays in your mind. Forgiveness is something that you need to practice every day. So uh, we need to not only uh, good at it, but also we need to have a full understanding of forgiveness from the Bible. So I'm trying to do my best uh, to give you uh, a more complete picture of what the Bible says about forgiveness. And then Jesus continued on the subject of forgiveness after the Lord's Prayer. It's kind of interesting. You know, there are six themes, like I said, in the Lord's Prayer. And then uh, Jesus continued to talk about forgiveness out of all the six major themes in the prayer. Uh, so he didn't continue to talk about well, how you can uh, worship God and uh, welcome the kingdom or do his will. He didn't continue to say that, but he focused on only one thing, which is forgiveness. So that's, uh, uh, we can tell how uh, Jesus uh, emphasized the importance of forgiveness. So verse 14, he said, For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Uh, here, Jesus made it very simple and very clear that your forgiveness uh, from the Father is related to your forgiveness to other people. Not only related, but also if you want to receive forgiveness from the Father, you have to forgive other people first. So now we see that uh, your forgiveness from God is not complete until you forgive other people. Uh, that brings some uh, fear of God to your heart, right? Uh, so it's not optional. Forgiving other people is not optional. It's not like, oh, God, Father, I don't feel like forgiving this person. I can forgive the other person who, who does not even uh, offend me. But, but this, this person, you know, that's an exception. No, no, no. No exception. Jesus made it very simple and clear. If you want to receive the Father's forgiveness, then you have to forgive everybody, everybody in your life. You know, and sometimes you may feel like, oh, that's hopeless. You know? But we know that uh, you may not be able to do it, and you definitely uh, would, not, would not be able to do it completely by your own willpower. But with God, all things are possible. We can do all things uh, through Christ who strengthens us. So is forgiveness. And uh, uh, let me submit to you this thought. Forgiveness is the most important skill for emotional health. Do you agree to this? And after uh, you know, almost 30 years of Christian walk, after so many years of learning the truth of forgiveness, I really just look back and see, wow, this is such an important, not just a theology, just thoughts, but this is something that we need to practice every day. So this is not just about uh, uh, philosophy. This is not about just good idea. This is about how you can enjoy wonderful daily life. This is how you can live uh, your day uh, victoriously. So you need to have the skill of uh, uh, forgiveness. Uh, so uh, we know that uh, a lot of uh, sicknesses has to do with our mental and our emotional health. And I read something uh, uh, said that uh, it is estimated that 80% of our physical sicknesses has to do with our emotional health. And then, and I learned that 70% of our emotional problems or spiritual problems, let's say bondages uh, or curses, actually has to do with unforgiveness. So we see that how important 
uh, forgiveness is to our emotional health as well as physical health. Uh, and because uh, forgiveness will produce bitterness, and bitterness will be like poisons uh, in, your, in your body, in your mind, in your emotion, in your willpower, in your relationship. Uh, so uh, unforgiveness is really a tremendous problem in uh, people's lives. So we really have to uh, really acquire this uh, skill of forgiveness. And uh, I want to uh, share with an idea, a concept of uh, uh, ungodly ties with you. Uh, so with uh, you know, anybody you know, even acquaintances, you have certain uh, ties, certain kind of uh, connection with that person. As uh, if the closer you are to this person, the more time you spend with him, you're, uh, the stronger your ties are with these people. And uh, we know there are godly ties and also ungodly ties. Godly ties are the relationship, the connection between uh, people that are mostly love. Loving relationship is godly ties. Anything that is ungodly between you and the person uh, is not healthy, and uh, uh, that can be detrimental uh, to you. Uh, so ungodly ties uh, a lot of times uh, happens uh, through unforgiveness. So unforgiveness is a major form of ungodly ties, uh, and I think. Uh, uh, in the ungodly ties of unforgiveness, there are three major elements to this ungodly tie of unforgiveness. Number one is bitterness. Number two is anger. Number three is hostility. So when there is forgiveness, unforgiveness, there is bitterness. There is anger. There is hostility. So when you um, think of somebody that you don't forgive, then uh, you will, when you think of this person, you'll feel better. Okay? And then uh, there, could, there would be anger when you think of the, what he has done to you, what kind of hurt that he has brought, brought to you, then you will feel anger. And then hostility. Even your family members, if they hurt you, and you don't forgive that person, you will have hostility. Uh, especially when, even between husband and wife, uh, when you are fighting each other, you, you don't act like you are friends. <laughs> you don't act like you are lovers. You act like you are, you are just uh, you know, enemies who are fighting each other. So sometimes you, you look back and say, why do I act like that? Why do I argue like we are enemies? Because there is unforgiveness and there is hostility. And then, uh, I don't know if you uh, have this uh, 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 experience. When somebody you don't forgive is uh, around you, you know, you will feel like your heartbeat is uh, going a little faster, and then your hair is going up, and then, <laughs> you know, uh, and then you feel alert. And that's hostility. You know, this is how our mind works. Uh, when, when you know, just a uh, uh, psychologist said that uh, in our brain, uh, normally there's an area would uh, tell if somebody is a friend or an enemy. It's pretty dichotomous, either friend or an enemy. So when you are uh, not forgiving someone, and then your mind is telling, okay, the enemy is uh, is close, so there will be alarm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's what I, that's an ungodly tie. So we certainly, you know, know this is not healthy uh, when you have ungodly ties with people. Uh, so a lot of times, uh, you know, we like to pray, especially Pastor Ho, uh, when you know, when she realizes that somebody has any kind of uh, ungodly ties with a certain person. Sometimes it could be unforgiveness. Sometimes it could be lust. Sometimes it could be lies or uh, hurts. And, and she would normally uh, we would pray that God you. Sever, you cut off the uncut godly ties, uh, but you only 
preserve the godly ties, which is love, loving relationship. So it's important that we want to maintain godly ties in our relationship. And we want to be aware of any ungodly ties between people. And then we want to make sure uh, the ungodly ties are not uh, binding us. Okay? Now, as uh, we were talking about uh, complete forgiveness, I would say that there are three parts to complete forgiveness. When we sin, you know, every day we can make a mistake, and we not only sin against God, but also we might sin against other people. And then our conscience can also be violated. So in a complete forgiveness, number one, we need to forgive other people by God's grace and by His power. And then, we need to ask God for forgiveness. That's the second step. And then the last one, which, which is ignored, uh, oftentimes is to forgive ourselves. A lot of times we ask God for forgiveness and repent, we repent, but we don't really forgive ourselves. I don't know if you can relate to what I'm saying. If you carry any kind of sense of guilt or condemnation, then you know that you are not forgiving yourself. Because God has already forgiven us in Jesus. So the Bible tells us that there is no more condemnation in Christ Jesus. No more sense of condemnation. So if, there is still, if you still have the sense of condemnation, then you know that you have not forgiven yourself. And a lot of times it's because the enemy, uh, Satan, still you know, condemns you, still uh, accusing you. So you want to be aware, and then you just bring that to the Lord, and uh, you need to forgive yourself. So this is uh, what uh, I mean by complete forgiveness. That includes three, uh, three parts, three steps. And the order is also very important. The order is, uh, you need to be done in this order. Because uh, from what we just read earlier, uh, we cannot fully be forgiven by God until we forgive others. So we need to forgive others, then ask for His forgiveness, ask for God's forgiveness. And then, uh, on the basis of God's forgiveness, you can forgive yourself. Okay, so this, these are the, uh, remember, when you think of forgiveness, uh, you should uh, include these uh, three parts. Forgiveness is not only the way to freedom. Uh, set you free from ungodly ties with other people. Set you free from emotional, mental uh, bondages and curses. But also, uh, it is a way uh, to grow and break through. You want breakthrough in your life? Maybe you need to forgive. You want to grow more maturely in faith in your, uh, in your uh, heart? Maybe forgiveness is the key. And some people say, oh God, you know, this person is very hard to deal with. I, I really, you know, I don't want to deal with it, uh, forgiving this person. Uh, but you know that if you, uh, you know, if you just want, if you don't, if you decide not to obey the Lord on this, then uh, sooner or later, you have to come back and to deal with it again. And uh, it could be even more challenging. I'm not saying that uh, forgiveness is, is uh, instantaneous. We know that forgiveness is actually takes time. So, it's okay if you cannot fully be released uh, in uh, unforgiveness or not forgiving one person, but you need to be settled in your heart that this is God's will and I'm determined to do this and it takes time, sooner or later, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be able to do it completely and I'm uh, determined 
complete this process of forgiveness. So forgiveness is a process, and uh, it can be like a wrestling, it can be like a battling, but don't give up. Just continue to press on in forgiveness. Okay. Um, today I just want to share with you uh, from the story of Joseph. Uh, among all the <coughs> forgiving forgiveness stories in the Bible, of course, uh, Jesus' uh, forgiveness is by far the greatest story, the greatest act of forgiveness. Uh, but other than Jesus' forgiveness, to me, I think the most impressive one and the one that I can learn the most is from Joseph's story, uh, from the book of, Gen uh, book of Genesis. And we know that most of you, I believe, that are familiar with uh, Joseph's story. And I just want to uh, familiarize you or remind you a little bit of the background of this uh, story. We know that Joseph, as a teenager, he was already chosen by God in his dream. He had two dreams in a row. Uh, the dreams uh, uh, says that you know, all his brothers, uh, you know, eleven brothers, and even his parents will bow before him. Yeah. as a as a young man, you know, he was probably 16, 17 years old. He had the dream, you know. Of course, uh, oh, my even my parents will bow before me. What do you think? Uh, I think uh, Joseph probably was a little bit, uh, you know, just. Uh, Floating, you know, it's like, <laughs> wow, my family, my family will bow before me, oh, I'll be a great man in the future. And then uh, out of this kind of uh, mentality, he started telling his brothers, oh, I had this dream, you know, I'm, in the future you're going to bow before me. If you were his elder brother, what would you think? <laughs> ah, or you're, if you are his uh, dad or mom, what? I'm going to bow before you. Oh, what do you mean? You are supposed to bow before me. Uh, but um, so Joseph at that point he didn't handle uh, the dream uh, or God's revelation properly. How many of you know that God can give you revelation, but you might not handle it properly sometimes? But it's go it's okay. God can deal with it, and uh, and even uh, God was able to use uh, his uh, shortcoming to fulfill uh, his destiny. So sure enough, uh, his brothers were very jealous of him, and then uh, eventually they found an opportunity and uh, you know, uh, trapped him and sold him, and uh, he was sent to Egypt to be a slave. Uh, so that was so uh, devastating to Joseph. How could the brothers that I trust uh, sold me? I came all the way to the desert to bring lunchbox to you, and then you did this to me. So you can imagine all the struggles, all the pain that he had to go through, all the bitterness, all the unforgiveness, and hatred, and anger, and uh, self-pity. And then the story went on, it was even worse. Uh, he was uh, falsely accused, and then he was sent into the jail. Uh, but he just continued to do what he was supposed to do, and then eventually he was promoted uh, to uh, like a prime minister of the greatest empire at that time, Egypt. So and then uh, gradually he got to understand God's hand in his life, even in the most uh, difficult time, most uh, um, uh, pathetic time. His life. Uh, so, and then uh, finally, uh, he was a God just used uh, his life to save the whole empire of Egypt as well as all his family members. And then uh, uh, from chapter 50, verse 15, uh, it is when uh, his uh, father. Uh, Jacob died, and then uh, Joseph's brothers uh, started uh, feeling very insecure. Okay, so let's uh, go to the passage, uh, which is verse 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, 
They said, what if Joseph bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong which we did to him? So they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father charged before he died, saying, thus you shall say to Joseph, please forgive. I beg you the transgression of your brothers and their sin, for they did you wrong. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in God's place? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, to preserve many people alive. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Uh, so this passage is really a, such a beautiful story of love and forgiveness. Uh, by this time, uh, Joseph uh, was uh, already very old. Uh, his father died, passed away, so he might be already 80 years old or something like that. And then, uh, uh, so they have uh, dealt with uh, their uh, offenses already because uh, Joseph uh, talked to the brothers and cried and hugged them after maybe almost 30, 20 years of uh, being apart. Um, so, you know, Joseph thought, I have already told you that I forgive you. Uh, so, you know, why are you saying all these things to me? Why are you still afraid? And then we know that uh, there is a, actually, when you think of a human nature, uh, what his brother's concern was somewhat legitimate. Because from human nature, uh, Joseph may have been kind to the brothers because of the account of their father, Jacob. Now the Jacob is gone. So maybe this is a time for revenge, finally. Yeah. So, you know, his, his brother really has some legitimate concerns. And then uh, uh, he said, uh, they, they said that, uh, uh, you know, Joseph bears a grudge. If there is no forgiveness, that there will be a grudge, a grudge, and then uh, we'll pay back in full. So uh, we know that in human nature, when you don't forgive, not only you will hold a grudge, but also you will find a chance to revenge. So that's um, uh, what unforgiveness can do uh, in, uh, in a person. And then uh, uh, Joseph, and Joseph's, uh, Joseph's answer was very uh, uh, mind uh, uh, stimulating. He said, "Do not be afraid, for am I in God's place?" In other words, he's saying that I'm not assuming God's place. I'm not God, and I don't plan to play God in my life or in your life. God is God, I'm not God. Okay, so I, I know where I belong. Okay, so he made it, he's very clear about who God is and who he is. It's very important. I'm not in God's place, so I'm not judging you. I'm not in God's place, so I'm not revenging you. I don't have the right, only God has the right. So he's very clear. He has a true fear of God. As for you, you meant evil against me. In forgiveness, in forgiveness, it doesn't justify people's mistakes or sins. So sometimes they feel like, oh, how can I forgive this person? If I forgive this person, that means uh, I agree to what he has done. No, 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 that's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is not agreeing to this person's mistake, but you just give the 
authority or right of judgment to God. Let God be the judge and release the person to God. And let God revenge or vindicate for you instead of you taking the law into your own hand. That's forgiveness. Okay, so we see that uh, uh, Joseph uh, said, uh, I'm, Am I in God's place? You, mean, you meant evil against me. What you did was really evil, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this pleasant result. So what he's saying is that uh, for people who can forgive other people, a lot of times they have the right thinking, knowing that God means good for me all the time. So it doesn't matter whether other people meant evil to me or mean good to me or negligence. It doesn't matter. You can do it all you want to do to kill me and to hurt me, but what matters is what God wants to do with me. And God's heart and God's will for us is always to give us peace and give us blessings and always out of His mercy and love to us. So we can be so secure in God's love that we don't fear other people's offenses. Because uh, a perfect love casts out fear. So if you are secure in God's love, it's very, it will be difficult for you not to forgive. So a lot of times uh, the bottom line is that you need to go back to God's love. You need to be secure in God's love. And then uh, uh, he said that uh, read about this present result to preserve many people alive. So we see that uh, Joseph see the big picture. So he was able to be released. You see the big picture of, you know, if, you know, when Joseph looked back to his life, if God didn't allow his brother to, be, uh, to sell him to Egypt, he will never to never make it to uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Egypt. So, although sometimes uh, you may go through uh, sufferings or uh, unfair treatment, but God may be using it for your promotion in the future. So when uh, Joseph looked back, now I understand why I had to go through all those sufferings. Because God is in control and he orchestrated all things so that today my life can be blessed, my destiny can be fulfilled, my two dreams come true, and then I can turn back to bless my family and all the empire. So he has the whole picture. When he sees the whole picture, he's totally released. So for us to uh, forgive other people, we need to stand back and take on God's perspective to see the big picture, then you can be released. Amen? And 21, so therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he uh, returned evil with goodness. Yeah. Uh, so he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So instead of uh, uh, treating his brothers with hatred, he was able to treat them with love. Now, according to what have we, we have talked about, I'd like to um, summarize into five points how we can uh, truly forgive other people. By God's grace, we need to do the following five things that we will be able to forgive other people. Number one is to hold on to God's righteousness. Joseph held on to God's righteousness. He never lost faith in the middle of all the trials and he still put his trust in the Lord. So even, you know, like uh, Sam uh, shared earlier, he was disappointed, even complaining, when uh, things didn't go his way.
But when he just uh, uh, was restored in his faith, that's when he was able to have the breakthrough. So hold on to God's righteousness in faith, then uh, you'll be able to uh, release the unforgiveness. Uh, God is righteous, He will vindicate for you. Okay? And then uh, I want to share with you uh, something that just happened a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Hope and I went to a church to help uh, minister in the church. And that church is uh, the, one of the mega churches, uh, almost uh, you know, uh, approaching 2,000 people in the church. And uh, uh, the, uh, the former pastor uh, was, well, the former pastor is already about 70 years old, and uh, he had been married for uh, 40 some years. Uh, so uh, we were able to uh, have a dinner with uh, this couple. And then uh, when we were uh, you know, chatting with them, uh, one person just you know, asked uh, the pastor, uh, how you know you have been married happily for 40 some years, so, so what, is, what is the secret? Uh, so that's a, a good question to ask. And then um, before uh, uh, the pastor's wife uh, answered the questions, we were all very admiring the pastor, you know, uh, he's, uh, he's the pastor who was able to lead the church, to the mega church, and uh, endure so many uh, problems. Uh, 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 so we admire this uh, 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 elderly man. But after the pastor's wife shared, and we all <laughs> admired the pastor's wife a lot, uh, the, story, the background of uh, their story is that uh, before they took uh, over the church uh, 40 some years ago, the church went through some ordeals. So when, the, when this pastor took over the church, um, you know, the leaders, none of the leaders trusted the pastor. So the pastor was actually a very, very kind, very nice uh, man, very good leader. But because of their past uh, history, so they didn't trust the pastor. So the, pastor, the pastor was so frustrated because whatever he wants to do, a lot of times uh, there would be questions, there would be uh, speculation, and just uh, criticism, opposition, all that. Uh, so as a leader, you know that you know, that would be very, very difficult and very, very frustrating. And sometimes you feel like uh, quitting. So you can imagine that you know, having to deal with all this, every day when he went back home, his wife would try to talk to him. You know, oh, I haven't seen you for all day. How's the day? He didn't want to talk. Okay, and then not only that, he, you know, he, he just gave him a you know bad, <laughs> bad expression. So uh, the pastor's wife was, you know, was very upset. You know, how come? You know, I'm trying to be nice to you, but you you have this mean look to me and uh, not not trying to talk to me. How's our fellowship with each other? Uh, so she was very upset. And then uh, she just, um, you know, went to prayer and just cried before the Lord. God, you know, this is not fair. Why is he treating me like that? So of course, that was a crisis in their marriage. And then at that point, God gave her a passage, which is the one I'm about to read to you. When she shared with the, shared the passage with us, we said, oh, let us know where the passage is because it's so good. Uh, so it is uh, from Isaiah 49, verse 4. But I said, I have toiled in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely the justice due to me is with the Lord and my reward with my God. So when Isaiah was... Uh, Writing this, what he's saying is, I have toiled, I worked so hard, and uh, I spent so my strength and uh, so, uh, working so hard. But what do I get? It seems like uh, you know I don't get any reward for my own work. So sometimes you would feel frustrated. But Isaiah's mind just turned around and start to think about God and put his faith. 
this hope. You, yes, surely the justice due to me is with the Lord. So although I worked so hard and nothing came about, but I know one day God will vindicate me. So the justice due to me is with the Lord. God will give me the justice. And my reward with uh, and my reward with my God. God is the one who will give me the reward. Sometimes you work very hard on one area, but you gain nothing. But God just give you free gift from other areas. Have you ever experienced that? Things like that. So of course we need to work hard. We don't know God will give us reward directly from that. Most of the times he does. Sometimes uh, we might work very hard, but we don't get reward directly. But God still, uh, by His grace, will give us His reward. So this is how we deal with frustration. So, uh, this, uh, so basically, the pastor's wife is saying that, okay, God is going to give me His justice. So I don't have to try to strive for my own justice by fighting, arguing with my husband. But I will let God do His justice for me. So in other words, she has all her burdens and all her frustration to the Lord. And that's how she was able to forgive her husband. And then once she forgives her husband, then her husband is relieved. And she doesn't, he, did, he didn't have to carry extra burden from the family. And he was able to deal with his ministry fully. So because of that, he was able to uh, sustain and overcome all the issues. And eventually, he was able to come out of it and thrive. And then the church started to fly. So we see how uh, this godly woman was uh, supported just by one word of God. And then because of that, God was able to do chain reaction and change things around for the whole church. So you never underestimate what one person can do. Never underestimate what one verse of God can do. So this is a great encouraging uh, testament. So you need to, when you realize God is, that God is in control and He will take care of you when things are not fair to you, you will be relieved and you will be able to sleep well at night. So uh, how do we forgive? Number one, we need to hold on to God's righteousness in faith. He is the one who will make the case. Number two, related to the first one, is to lay down your judgment. I talk about this all the time. I hope that you are not uh, bored by now, and uh, I hope that you get it. Jesus tells us not to judge, not to be critical. Uh, we know that uh, ever since uh, the uh, fruit of uh, the knowledge of good and evil, people start to take on the authority of judging. So it's not like we don't, God doesn't want us to judge, but a lot of times uh, we in doing so, we are judging according to our own standard instead of God's standard. But you see, um, Joseph said, am I in God's place? I'm not in God's place to judge. I'm not in God's place to judge your uh, evil intent. God will do that, not me. So when he laid down his uh, judgment, uh, he was able to release his brother. Um, so it, when we look at it, we know that uh, being judgmental is really foolishness. Because uh, when somebody offends you, you feel hurt. We, we tend to be quick to make a judgment and accusation against that person. But do you know what just happened to this person? Do you know that how, what he had to go through uh, the whole day or his whole his family? You don't know the story. You cannot just uh, 
judge a, who's so quick to make a judgment to simply by his, uh, you know, his, his uh, offense to you. That's just not right. Because we, our knowledge about other people's story or other people's life is so limited. So that's why uh, the Jesus tells us not to uh, be judgmental because our knowledge is very limited. So um, we need to lay down our judgment against uh, people. Just imagine if jo Joseph uh, keep on saying that, oh, my brothers are evil. Uh, how could he do that to me? That's so evil. It's so, uh, they sold uh, their own brother. If he keep on judging uh, his brother, he can never forgive his brothers. So he had to release it to God, and then you'll be able to uh, forgive. Let's look at the Jesus example. We know that uh, on the cross, uh, Jesus said this in Luke uh, chapter 23, verse uh, 33. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. So if you feel like uh, you are being uh, treated wrong, think about what Jesus had to go through. If you felt that people had meant evil to you, thought, think about what Jesus was uh, uh, so uh, uh, treated with evil. We see that Jesus has more right to judge people, to judge these people who sin against him. But he said, I came not to judge, but to save. He know very well that his timing of judgment has not come. His, time, his uh, uh, judgment will come until the second coming, not the first one. So even Jesus did not judge uh, his enemies when he was uh, being crucified. And then not only he didn't, didn't want to judge, but also he interceded, interceded for uh, the, his enemies. He said, forgive Father, forgive them. So he was speaking of the praying on behalf of uh, his enemies, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. A lot of times you forgive people because you can pray the same prayer. Father, they don't know what they are doing. A lot of times when you think about how people offended you, you will understand why Jesus said this. Because they offend you because they don't know what they are doing. They don't know how they are hurting you. They don't know how you feel. They don't know what you are going through. They don't know that will be the consequence of their words. And uh, uh, so uh, that's uh, how Jesus was able to forgive us. We want to learn from Jesus. And then from uh, James 2.13, uh, the word tells us, mercy triumphs over judgment. In Jesus' uh, prayer, mercy triumphs over judgment. So in our forgiveness, we want to uh, do the same. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Number three, by God's grace, we want to see our responsibility in the offense. We need to admit that we don't all we are not always right. How many of you are always right? How many of you? <laughs> so uh, when people offend you, sometimes you need to examine yourself. Maybe it's not all their fault. It could be a responsibility. For me, when I examine myself and I see my responsibility, I feel relieved from the unforgiveness. I don't, know, I don't know about you, you can try this. So when you see your responsibility, you know, oh, it's not all their fault. 
so I cannot blame it all on them. Oh, I need to change. Uh, so it's not like they really are, you know, have evil intent to me. Uh, they, they do this, they offend me and hurt me because I have responsibility. So I can, I can be relieved when I see my responsibility. So forgive, in forgiveness, if you see your responsibility, then it will be easier. Only God is righteous. We cannot be self-righteous. Number four, how can we uh, uh, forgive other people? Number four is to see the picture through God's perspective. So when, uh, when there is uh, offenses, you can always confess that God is hurting, but I believe that out of this, you're going to do good to me. I trust in you. And then when, once you started confessing that, God will open your eyes to see his perspective. How are you going to benefit from this offense? How are you going to benefit from this uh, people's uh, hurt. And then once you see, oh, I'm going, to be ben I'm going to be benefited, I'm going to be blessed by God, my faith is going to be stronger, I'm going to be more loving. Wow! You know, I thank God for this. And once you started thanking God, then you'll be relieved. And you'll be able to forgive. Number five, overcome forgiveness by praising God and loving people. Overcoming by praising God and loving people. How can you have power through praises? We need to practice praises. We need to uh, praise God so that we can focus on God's goodness. Once you focus on God's goodness, you'll be joyful. Once you're joyful, you'll have power. You have power, then you'll be able to forgive. And uh, uh, just uh, last week, uh, there, was a, there was a small group at our home. And then one Chinese sister just uh, was sharing uh, how uh, she was able to forgive uh, her family uh, because uh, her, her family was complaining to her and just accusing her and uh, falsely. And then, you know, she said before uh, she was a Christian, she would be just uh, fighting back, we would just be arguing. Uh, but uh, this time, since she, she, she's been learning crazy, Praises as a lifestyle. So she started to stop and you know praise God and thank and thank you God uh, for God's goodness. And then in, in doing so, uh, she started to uh, be filled with God's power and love. And then uh, she didn't fight back. And in, uh, in fact, on the contrary, she was able to talk to her brother in a very nice way. And uh, this time, uh, the brother. Uh, even shared his heart and apologized, which had never happened. So praises can help us to forgive. And also, loving people can help us to forgive. Uh, just like yesterday, I went to Taichung Banner Church. They celebrated uh, uh, their 20th uh, anniversary for the whole week. So yesterday was the last event. That was a very special way. Uh, they had uh, combined, uh, how do you say, joined the wedding for 20 couples to be married together. Okay? Uh, why 20? Because that was the 20th anniversary. So only 20 couples. And uh, when they announced uh, this uh, and opened up uh, for people, for new couples uh, to, to, uh, to, to enroll to this, you know, immediately. Uh, 20, 20 couples took the, all, all the slots. There were more people in line waiting to, to uh, get married. But anyway, so 20 couples uh, getting married together. And then uh, uh, the, the pastor gave uh, you know, uh, some exhortation, very good word. But the pastor's wife came up toward the end and spoke for only three minutes. And that was just ooh, so powerful. <laughs> And uh, she said, you know, in a marriage, you know, sooner or later you'll find something that's really you don't like about your spouse. You definitely, you know, it doesn't matter how good this person could be, how perfect you're thinking, 
he or she should be. But eventually you'll find something that you really don't like. So what do you do about it? Do you just focus on it and get you know, better and, and get condemning and cannot get out of it? No, that's not the way to deal with it. That's not how the Bible teaches. Then we, according to the Bible, we need to love the person as they, the way they are. In other words, we accept their, uh, their strength as well as their weaknesses. Okay? And then nobody is perfect. Everybody is limited in some ways. But it's easy said than done. You know, we say, oh yeah, I know, I need to accept the, you know, this problem and that problem. But when it's really happening to you, uh, especially in a marriage relationship, you know, it's really hard. And uh, so this uh, person's wife said, you know how I deal with this? I know that my love to my husband is limited. It's good that she admits that. And, uh, but you know what? At that point, I pray to God. I ask God to give me his love so I can love my husband when he is not looking good. When I'm really upset. Uh, so what she does is uh, every time when she struggles, and she would just uh, pray to God. And God, show me how you love him. And God does that every time. <laughs> and, then, and then she would be overwhelmed. Wow, God, you love him that much? You could love him this way? Oh, no. Yeah, so the more, uh, the more she uh, thought about that, the more love uh, she would have for him. Uh, so uh, this, this is how the pastor's life was uh, spared. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we know that our love to people is limited. Uh, and uh, our ability to forgive people is limited, but uh, when we ask for God's love, then we'll be able to forgive other people. Okay. So today, uh, we learn how to uh, forgive other people. It's not by our own willpower, but it's by God's, by God's grace. And uh, I share with you the five points, and uh, uh, we just need to... Uh, uh, just uh, by God's grace, uh, practice uh, these points, and then uh, uh, we want to maintain godly ties with people and sever any ungodly ties with people. And uh, uh, that's how our lives uh, can be pleasing to God and give glory to God. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus. That again, we are learning uh, the biblical truth of forgiveness. Father, I thank you that um, our, my brothers and sisters really has the heart to obey your word, to forgive people. And uh, we all acknowledge that uh, we are so limited in our ability to forgive and to love. But right now, we just pray that you give us your love and your ability to forgive and give us strength in our faith so that we can see uh, our offenses or the people who offend us from your perspective. But it helps us to see the whole picture so that we can be relieved. Right now I just pray that uh, the Holy Spirit would just uh, bring to your mind uh, what uh, he is uh, speaking to you and also maybe God is uh, putting somebody into your mind that you have not uh, been able to forgive completely right now if that's you you can just pray to God saying that God thank you for bringing that person to my mind and I cry out for your grace because I cannot forgive this person but I trust in you by your grace I would be able I will be able to forgive this person completely not just partial not just uh, lip service but I want to be able to forgive this person completely so Father I right now in the name of Jesus I cut off any ungodly ties between me and that person
person. Only a maintain godly ties of love between us in the name of Jesus. Father, I renounce any bitterness, any hostility, any anger, any judgmental mentality in the name of Jesus. Father, I release this person to you. Father, I thank you for protecting me and not allow this offense to occur by this person, but you will vindicate for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we forgive other people, we receive forgiveness from God, and we forgive ourselves. That's complete forgiveness. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.